Hello, welcome to this video about the balloons. So there are only two uh, quotations I'm going to focus on in this video. But as usual, they're hugely symbolic. So um, Kathy has this memory of the balloons, which um, she accesses uh, as soon as she discovers that Hailsham is closing. And the fact that Hailsham is closing and that the centre of her childhood is disappearing is what prompts her to examine this image. Now, what's interesting, of course, is that Kathy doesn't really understand the image at all. She just tells us that it occupied her thoughts. She doesn't solve the puzzle of it. And Ishiguru does this deliberately. Um, it's a technique, and it's to force us as readers to solve the puzzle. And it's as though uh, Ishiguru is throwing little light bulb moments at the reader. He's basically asking us all the time to interpret his novel symbolically. OK, let's leap in. So she's in a seaside town and she's following a man who's got out of a van dressed as a clown. He opened the back of the van and took out a bunch of helium balloons, about a dozen of them, and for a moment he was holding the balloons in one hand while he bent down and rummaged about in his vehicle with the other. As I came closer, I could see the balloons had faces and shaped ears, and they looked like a little tribe bobbing in the air above their owner, waiting for him. So we can clearly see in the way that the balloons have been personified here, with faces and ears, that they represent people. And because of the connection to Hailsham, we can see that they represent the children. And obviously he's a clown going to a children's party, so that connection with children is even clearer. But uh, Ishiguru is uh, looking at this idea again of control. So the clown controls these balloons who look like they want to escape, hence the helium. Uh, so because they're filled with helium, they're reaching up towards the sky as though to escape, but they never manage it. And that, again, is like the children at Hailsham. Uh, they uh, think about the wider world, but they have these stories about the fences that keep them in. And then by the time they grow up, uh, they never uh, seek to escape, ever. There's no reference to any student in this book ever trying to escape their fate of donation. They don't get on a boat and try to get to the continent. Um, nothing. They don't go underground and try to pretend to be human. Um, no, no, none of that is discussed because Ishiguru is suggesting this is what we're all like. We all think we're moving towards freedom, like the helium balloons, but actually we're all held in someone's grip, the owner. Now you could delve in a little more deeply here and decide that this might be religious symbolism. So God is in control of us and therefore that would be a secure image. Uh, God has a purpose for us. He controls our fate, and um, we believe that after death, all will be revealed. We'll um, meet our, our God in heaven. However, what if there is no God in this image, and this owner is simply society, just like uh, the clones are controlled by society in this novel? If we're all owned by society, that means we're all conditioned to behave in certain ways. We think we're balloons reaching towards freedom, full of helium, full of life, um, uplifted, but actually we're simply being held back by conventions we can't even see. Um, so there's uh, some interesting explorations that you can easily use for this imagery. Right, let's go a little further. Sometimes I felt awkward about it and I even thought the clown might turn and say something. This is because she's following the clown. But since that was the way I had to go, there wasn't much else I could do. So we just kept walking, the clown and me, on and on, along the deserted pavement, still wet from the morning. So in this symbolism, it appears as though the clown is controlling um, Kathy. She's forced to follow him. So in this imagery, uh, what is controlling her is actually a clown. Uh, so Ishiguru could be pointing out here that a belief in God, if it's God that's controlling us, is a foolish idea. 
there's no evidence for God. Um, it's just a story that we tell ourselves or an entertainment like the clown is. Or, if you don't want a religious perspective, then society's rules are like the clown. They're comical when you start looking at them. You know, why is it that um, when we get dressed up, men wear a tie? It's absurd. It's completely ridiculous. Why would we do that? Um, uh, completely nonsense. Why would we um, get married, go to a church, and promise to be faithful um, to our partners when most marriages actually end in divorce? Why do we have this fiction that we're all going to live happily ever after? Uh, I'm just chucking some social conventions at you so that you can see that um, if you stand outside the social conventions, so many of them can look utterly ridiculous. Um, you know, take money, for example. Um, I give you a piece of paper and on it is written the value of £20 and you believe that and therefore give me something that you think is worth £20. Well, I've got something real. You know, you might have given me five bottles of wine for £20, but all you've got in return is a piece of paper. Now, the only thing that gives that paper value is this social convention that that money has a value. Um, but think of Brexit. Um, the night before Brexit, my pound was worth um, at least one and a half euros. The night after Brexit, my pound is suddenly worth nearly one euro. It's been devalued overnight. It's just an idea, a convention. And so this is a way of thinking of society as a clown. Now, the problem with the clones is they don't see society as a clown. They're just led by it, and that's why they don't rebel. Um, and it's really an infuriating thing in this novel that all the clones accept everything. There's no underground movement. Um, there aren't any humans, you know, naturally born humans who are trying to save clones from their fate. You know, compare that to the story of slavery in America. And um, you've got many people trying to help escape slaves. Um, that's human nature, isn't it? But Ishiguro ignores that. He says no. I don't think humans are actually like that. Humans basically just accept their fates. And they don't realise how awful their fates are. Um, so that is why this image is here. OK, let's delve in to the second quotation. And all the time the balloons were bumping and grinning down at me. Every so often I could see the man's fist where all the balloon strings converged and I could see had them securely twisted together and in a tight grip. Well here, the man's fist up here and his tight grip could clearly be symbolic of the grip that Hailsham has over the students and certainly has over Kathy. She keeps returning to her memories of Hailsham all the time. Um, but if we go deeper, again, it's how tight a grip society has over us. We, on the other hand, in this symbolism, don't seem to notice it. We are grinning all the time. We feel happy because we've been held in this tight grip. So here, Ishiguru could be asking, um, do we need to be controlled in order to be happy? Would total freedom actually scare us? You know, if your schools and your parents said to you, look, you can go away and be whatever you want, how many of you would actually choose that? How many of you end up doing jobs which are very similar to everyone else's? Or, even more, very similar to the ones that um, are done by the people closest to you, your family and close friends? How many of you go out and do something completely different to the rest of society? Um, look around at your own families and you'll see it's not that many. Uh, so Ishiguru is asking this. Do we simply accept what society gives us. But here's the worst thing. Do we even not know that that's what happened? Do we go grinning around, uh, apparently feeling free, when actually we're held in the tight grip of social convention? So, even so, I kept worrying that one of the strings would come unraveled and a single balloon would sail off up into that cloudy sky. Well, a lot of things could be going on in this metaphor. So let's take the single balloon as a metaphor um, for Kathy herself. 
So here, the single balloon sailing off into the cloudy sky is a metaphor for her achieving freedom. And that's the thing that most worries her. She doesn't want to be free. And this could be a reason why she keeps um, returning to her memories of Hailsham. These keep her rooted. They keep her, keep her in that tight grip. And perhaps this is a way of giving her a purpose. Um, another way of interpreting that is suggesting that um, actually if we stopped worrying about society and the things that we should do, we could get freedom, like this balloon escaping. We wouldn't want it though in this image, because if, like Kathy, we believe that this made the sky cloudy, we wouldn't want it because we wouldn't be able to see into the sky, a metaphor, if you like, for the future. We couldn't see into that future, and because we couldn't predict what it would be like, it would be too worrying, and that's why we follow the futures that other people set down for us. Okay? Uh, let's look at it another way. It could be a metaphor here for death. Kathy is a carer after all, and uh, she's just been discussing with Laura the possibility of caring for um, for Ruth, who they've heard has had a difficult first donation, and she is caring for Roger, who's also going to die. Uh, so this could be a metaphor for not knowing what happens after death. And if death is the end of it, then life has no meaning. And that's similar to um, Kathy's worry that life will have no meaning for her without Hailsham. But if death is the end, and therefore life has no meaning on its own, surely we should seize every moment we can to enjoy life while it's here. And that's exactly what Kathy doesn't do, and what most of the clones don't do. And Ishiguro here is asking, do any of us actually seize life as the most important thing and cherish it and try to live every day to its maximum? Well, the novel would suggest, no, we don't. We just uh, get into routines and uh, we allow other people to control our thoughts and actions. So once again, we return to the mark scheme. Uh, we're looking to get full marks. So we've been conceptualized because we're thinking about the purpose of this symbolism and how really it's there not just to talk about Kathy herself, but uh, Ishiguro is using that to talk about wider society and ourselves. And that is the context. He's using this novel to explore our own relationships and belief. Uh, so that's the context, the readers that he's writing for now. Uh, we talked about the writer's methods because that is the use of symbol and metaphor. So we've hit all three of the assessment objectives. Um, we've been highly analytical because we're looking at individual words in the quotations. Um, and in fact, um, we've written, if you like, if this were a written discussion rather than just an oral one, an enormous amount about one simple image, the clown and the balloons. Uh, don't forget to show that you're being exploratory by offering more than one interpretation, which we did. We looked at the religious one, or we looked at the possibility that there is nothing after death. And uh, we also use tentative language like perhaps and could. And once you do that, you've hit everything in the top of the mark scheme. So if you'd like more, don't forget to subscribe and uh, good luck in your exams.